As we've already told you, Hollywood loves making remakes, almost as much as it loves giving Adam Sandler bumper multi-film deals, despite everyone hating them, even his kids, especially his kids. And for as long as we continue to spend millions on tickets, popcorn, and merchandise funding the La La Land recycling plant, it's unlikely that we'll see originality pushed in quite the manner it should be. Previously, we brought you such delights as the Police Academy remake, the Sister Act remake, and the Scarface remake, but really, that was only skimming the surface. The pool of Hollywood's obsession with itself is so deep that there are plenty more low-key remakes that'll probably infuriate you on the horizon. Here's a remake of our own. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are 10 more movie remakes you probably didn't know were in the works. Number 10. Rambo. Who needs sliced alone, right? It may sound like a crime against classic 80s cinema, but there will be a new Rambo movie, and it won't star its original iconic lead. Having said that, apparently Stallone is happy to have bowed out on a high point with 2008's Rambo, which is nice. Frankly, they should have done it in the same way they did Creed, launching a sort of backdoor spin-off starring the next generation alongside the veteran. But with Stallone reluctant and the bankability of the brand, it was sort of inevitable the franchise would continue in one way or another eventually. Number 9. Flight of the Navigator he might have Star Wars Episode IX and Jurassic World 2 on his plate currently, but it looks like Colin Trevorrow's next film, after the excellent safety not guaranteed, would be a remake of seminal 80s family flick, Flight of the Navigator. The problem is that Flight of the Navigator is possibly way too 80s to exist properly outside of the decade, but it is one of those properties that could really do with a shot in the arm by modern advancements in filmmaking technology. Plus, you'll have to say it quietly lest you wake the slumbering rose-tinted glasses brigade, but the original was never as good as the nostalgic appreciation of it seems to suggest. So there's definitely space for a redo. Number 8. The Warriors Back in 2005, Tony Scott had been planning to remake The Warriors set in modern-day New York City, but iconic gangs The Baseball Furies and Hi-Hats would not be included. After his tragic death, Crank co-director Mark Neveldine took over, but apparently he's admitted that it's currently stuck in a rights quagmire. It's fundamentally a great, timeless idea, and it would be particularly interesting to see a modern twist given the current political climate and the success of the Purge films, but it's a shame it could come at the cost of some of the original's luster. Number 7. Little Shop of Horrors Not content with masterminding the CW superhero shows and Riverdale, Greg Berlanti also has plans to direct a remake of Little Shop of Horrors. Some reports seem to suggest it may be a musical again, but we don't know whether the brilliant songs of the Frank Oz version will port over. The original report about the remake failed to mention whether the songs would be in the remake, but hopefully it will be a mix of old and new. It'll be great, just as long as they don't replace the idiosyncratic practical effects and puppetry with unnecessary CGI, and work hard getting as great of a cast as the 1986 version had. Number 6. Escape from New York It's been almost a decade since the first news of a possible Escape from New York remake was released. Back then, Gerard Butler was in line to play Snake Plissken in what might have been part original story, part remake. A lot of news water has flown under the film bridge since then, with various directors all supposedly attached at various stages. Likewise, Jeremy Renner replaced Butler, and then it seemed to be down to either John Bernthal or Dan Stevens for the lead, and Robert Rodriguez directing. For now, the lead remains unclear, but it's definitely coming, and it's definitely going to do a disservice to Kurt Russell's best role. Number 5. Inspector Gadget Inspector Gadget has been an institution of kids' TV to such an extent that it's a miracle that Michael Bay hasn't turned it into a billion-dollar franchise that emotionally waterboards our childhoods. Hopefully we'll get to see someone do it properly this time, with the latest news suggesting that Disney and the Lego movie's Lynn Pictures are making a new live-action film after the success of the most recent series. It absolutely is a good idea, particularly if it wipes out the memory of the awful Matthew Broderick adaptation. Plus, being better than that shouldn't be all that hard. Number 4. Flash Gordon it's a travesty there wasn't a Flash Gordon sequel in the 1980s, but it's even worse that none of the attempts to remake it on the big screen have come off since. But after a long time kicking around development hell, it looks like Mark Protosevich is on board to write, and he'll probably be joined by Matthew Vaughan, who is linked with the directing gig in 2016. Even though it's very much tied to the 80s, the remake is lumbering on, and best of all, Samuel J. Jones has expressed some interest in reappearing. So it might actually be as camp as it really needs to be. To work. Number 3. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels 
In 1988, Steve Martin offered one of his best performances in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, a remake itself of 1964's Bedtime Story. Inevitably, there will be some delicious anger at the decision to gender swap the roles with Rebel Wilson and Anne Hathaway in place of Martin and Michael Caine, but that's a great cast, and bringing in the thick of its Chris Addison to direct is a gamble that may well pay off. Let's let's try and be let's try and be enthusiastic and upbeat and supportive, okay? Rather unfortunately, it's been called... Are you ready? Nasty Women. Mm. But as long as they don't turn it into an excuse to have Rebel Wilson falling over and making tasteless fat jokes, it'll probably still be good for... Okay, maybe it's not... Let's just... Let's try and... Be encouraging. Let's try and be encouraging. Number two. Masters of the Universe. He-Man has been linked with a big screen remake for what feels like ages, with several scriptwriters already gone from the project, including the brain behind Kick-Ass 2. Thor Ragnarok's Christopher Yost is the latest to be attached, which is good news, and McGee still seems to be attached to direct what he calls his own personal passion project. Casting news will presumably follow soon, but the key thing for He-Man is the preservation of the right tone. He-Man belongs to the past. Nostalgia might make this all seem like a great idea, but it's going to be very hard to accept a straight adaptation, given how ridiculous He-Man and Skeletor looked in the original cartoon. Yeah, it might sort of work as a Game of Thrones-style fantasy blended with elements of Thor, but missing out the camp would be a major disservice to the original. Number one, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. If there's one remake currently in production that absolutely deserves to exist, it's the mooted remake, or readaptation, of Alan Moore's The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. After all, the first go was a shit adaptation for wankers, hashtag shit adaptation for wankers, apparently ruined by friction between star Sean Connery and director Stephen Norrington, which ended both of their careers deserved. Oh, that's harsh kind of deserved. Supposedly, the remake will be more female-centric, causing it to be more in line with the original comics, and so it's very much still happening with an agenda to kick off a new franchise. The comics deserve a hell of a lot better than that Sean Connery-led travesty, and it's about time it was done the right way. And that's our list. Make sure you subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching. Oh, hello there. I'm billionaire philanthropist, not Bruce Wayne. And as you may have heard, we've actually started up a What Culture Comics channel. Oh, that's better. Where you can go for all the comics lists, all the comics news, and all the comics discussion. So go on, go and subscribe to What Culture Comics for loads of amazing comics coverage.